Hey folks, I'm Demotro, and today I want to tell you about how we can turn percentages into prime factorizations that'll tell us a lot more about the quantities they're trying to describe. Now, I've already made a video on this channel a while ago about how I think percentages are overrated and are a pretty poor way of describing quantities. And more recently, I made an episode on my Combo Class channel about how we can extend prime factorizations where you can break a whole number down into the primes that multiply to make it beyond whole numbers into other realms of number. And I do recommend seeing that video first before you watch the rest of this. I've linked it in the description. But assuming most of you have seen the concepts in that, some of which related to how if we added negative exponents into the options of our prime factorizations, we could prime factorize all of the rational numbers, not just all of the whole numbers. Rational numbers being any number that could be made as a fraction of two integers. And that'll include the whole numbers, fractions, things we know as mixed numbers, or numbers with finite length or periodically repeating decimals. Those are all rational numbers that I showed how we could prime factorize just by allowing the primes to go to a negative power in the factorization. And since percentages, if we're ever given a finite length thing as a percent, can be translated into the rational numbers they're trying to describe, we can take it now a step further and turn percentages all the way into prime factorizations. But first of all, why would this be important? Well, when you see a percentage, some people just think of it as the amount and no more details being provided. Like if you saw 74%, it might not feel that different from 75% because both of them describe about three quarters of a thing. But if you knew something was exactly or very close to exactly 74% compared to 75%, those might tell you different things. Maybe something that's exactly 75% does have a reason it's encoding the fraction 3 fourths. Like if I had a million people flip two coins, well, all of the different options they could get for two coin flips would be heads, heads, tails, 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 heads, and heads, tails. And let's say I saw out of those million people, how many got at least one tails during their two flips? Well, the answer would be extraordinarily close to three quarters of the sample size, which would be almost exactly 75%. Compared to something like 74%, which wouldn't be implying as obvious of a structure, but might have some structure of its own. What if we did want to take 74% and find a way of seeing what really makes up that number? Are there any more details beyond the fact that it's somewhat around three quarters of a thing? Well, if I looked at what makes up 74%, we can remember that a percent really just makes us multiply a number by one one hundredth. It's the same as saying, what is 74 times 1 over 100? And that will give us 74 one hundredths, which we can take a 2 out of each of these to note that dividing the top and bottom by 2 simplifies to 37 over 50. And that's as far as we're going to be able to simplify that. And this may give us a little more detail about the structure. But now we've seen that we can actually turn this into a prime factorization as well. I can note that this 37 is a prime, which will show up to the first power in our factorization. That on the bottom here, we have 50, which is made up of 5 times 5 times 2. 
And since that's on the denominator and is acting like a reciprocal, we can note that we have a two to the negative first power. And since we have five times five, all on the bottom, that gives us five to the negative second power. Maybe this quantity of 74% had some way of emerging from the prime 37, the idea of one half or two to the negative first, and the idea of two magnitudes of five being multiplied in an inverse way. And this could even help us with frac or with percentages that have a number after a decimal point. Because if I encounter something like 72.9%, this really is hiding whatever structure it may have. Apart from being about 73 one hundredths of a thing, how else could we find any underlying structure that could actually be giving us details here. Well, if we look at what rational number this is describing, we can note that this is 72.9 over 100, which is 729 over 1,000. And that's as far as we could simplify its fraction form. 729 divided by 1,000. But that's still sort of hiding some of our details. We can also say that that has a prime factorization of three to the sixth power, which is that 729 part, times two to the negative third power, times five to the negative third power. The two and five components of this making up that thousand on the bottom, and this three to the sixth power making up that numerator. And maybe there is a reason that somewhere in nature or society or a computer or something that we had a few layers of magnitude of twos and fives on the bottom, and that we had something tripling six times, and that that ratio was what this percentage was originally trying to tell us. Not just that it was about 73%, but some other aspects of its structure. And we could do this with any percentage that either has a finite length amount of digits here, or even one with an infinite thing after a decimal point, if that infinite string of digits was periodically repeating. Like to capture two thirds, we would say 66.6 .6 with a line over it, meaning infinite repeating sixes to capture the percentage of two-thirds exactly, although we might encounter it in society as 66.7% or 66.67% or something else you may see it rounded to. And that additionally makes you wonder which rounded percentages got rounded from something that actually had more of a structure that we have now lost. In general, I think this is even more reasons why prime factorizations are cool and why percentages suck. I've also linked those other videos I've made on similar topics in this description, along with some cool links. And that's all for today's bonus video. Make sure you're tuned on the main Combo Class channel as well, where I'll have a cool episode related to how we can use clocks and the modular arithmetic that we can encode through clocks to do a new operation we haven't tried on clocks before. Modular division. That will be coming out sometime this weekend. And until then, hope you have a great one.